Welcome to Loosen Up Your Painting podcast, the podcast for creatives making their art and making a difference to their lives and the world. We discuss how to improve your art, your lifestyle and grow your creative business. I'm your host Malcolm Dewey from MalcolmDeweyFineArt.com and let's begin. Artists, would you like to join Malcolm each month for a live painting demonstration and tutorial? You can also try out the painting for yourself and receive a critique of your work. Plus watch the recordings of all the lessons in HD whenever you want to. Then share your work and chat to other participating artists in the community. All of this is possible when you join Malcolm's Artists Live channel. It is an investment that will pay you back in painting pleasure many times over. Find out more and preview the artist's live channel then join in the fun. Details on MalcolmDeweyFineArt.com Welcome to the Loosen Up Your Painting podcast. I'm your host Malcolm Dewey and today I've got a special guest, Michael Magruch. Michael's been on the show before and we're back together again to discuss Michael's latest article on the worth and value of ourselves as human beings breaking out of the, the system to give more expression to our innate value as artists and creatives. And look out on my blog where I'm going to publish this interview as well for a download of Michael's latest article. You can also find out more about Michael on his website at michaelm.com. That's Michael with two L's and have a look at his writing and art and get in touch with him as well to discuss any of his coaching services. All right, without further delay, let's begin. Welcome, Michael. It's nice to chat to you again. Good to see you again, Malcolm. Well, I've had a, a lot of positive response to our last uh, chat about art, creativity and trying to survive or keep out of the system so we can be more creative. Recently, you've sent me a link to your latest article on LinkedIn, and I had a look at that, and I thought it would be a good topic or a general topic for us to chat about today. And I guess in uh, your article is titled Money and Systems and Value. What it comes down to is, as you've summarized, is how much is a human worth? Uh, have we lost our appreciation for our humanity? What is the problem that we as artists and people in general are facing right now? Yes, uh, you know, we talked about last time that 95 to 97% of artists are worldwide poor. And that's something that interests me very much because it saved my life since, you know, I was... I told you I was a sick child and I was dyslexic. I couldn't fit in any systems. And actually that, that is a good thing because it made me see now it does, you know, my work now to look at uh, systems and to uh, look at who is, um, where's the value uh, of, of artists because, and we, we shortly uh, touched on that, that artists have never defined yourselves. That's why I have my podcast, Smart of Art. And, um, that we need to, artists need to define themselves. But in order to define themselves, I think we, I did this deep dive on this article, which I think uh, you can give a PTF on, on your, on your, uh, on this episode so people can see it because this is not about me or uh, uh, you. This is about us all. And we have to find, recognize that the value of the world and being human is in the human togetherness in the in inclusivity and art is a perfect um, environment where I think this is still practiced. It's not as strong as it was, but in, in art, it's about the project. It's not about, oh, I'm better than I'm older. I'm younger. I'm woman. I'm man. I'm gender. You, you just, you just who you are and you participate in the project and everybody gives the best that they can do. So if somebody is good in stretching canvases, right, <laughs> Markham, right, you go, everybody goes to the canvas stretcher. 
you have good paints, you, you have the yellow, you can only get from that guy, you go to that guy. And everybody has its part. Nobody is better. It's in like in nature, the elephant is not worth more than the than the ant. Uh, it's it's about the balance, about putting it all together. You You are valuable because you exist. And I think that's important for artists to uh, to recognize. I, I suppose if you are successful already in what you're doing, or you are, you've got an audience, or you're stretching canvases, and you're the best canvas stretcher in town, um, maybe that person can relax into being themselves. Um, I think we find all the the problems with people that are struggling to keep the head above water or they don't feel appreciated or valued. And uh, that is where all the, well, from self-esteem issues to more uh, chronic problems. And maybe it's that person who could be listening to this and needs to appreciate their value simply for showing up they don't have to be the best, but as long as they show up and and have, make a go of it, is that a starting point? I, I think I think I think um, there's two things. When you do the best, so just showing up is number one. Is you're absolutely right. It's the first step. You show up, and you gauge where you're gonna fit in. So what is that? Not what is the hardest, what you have to prove to the thing. This is what system conditioning does. Uh, you have the best system uh, relevance for that system. And you cannot define yourself with saying, you know, the system needs a plumber. Therefore, I'm going to be a plumber. What is your human value? You know, I'm good with my hands. I'm good with, with my eyes. I'm good with my ears. I'm, I'm good with people. I'm not good with people. It, it doesn't matter, but you need to know the self-awareness. And I think art is such a powerful tool because there's nobody that tells you, I mean, obviously when the project is finished, people use, you know, the system takes it as a, as a product, like a bicycle. But while you're creating, while you're interacting with your, uh, with your unseen self. So you're interacting constantly. You have an inspiration. That's a thought. That's not, I mean, it's already physical. And some people say that's already physical, but you have a thought, an inspiration, a color, uh, a person, and you want to, it inspires you to do something, you know, uh, it inspires you, inspires you to, to, uh, you know, create uh, that energy to create that person to do an, uh, a portrait or you or you or it inspires you to do I don't know still life I don't know an abstract painting that could be a, a, a person it could be a color and then you you work on this you start with a blank canvas which is very important because without the space it's like you giving me space to talk without you this I cannot paint you know I cannot draw my thoughts because these are not previously discussed themes. We, we do this on the fly. So when I, when you paint, so you're interacting, I, I have yellow and then I put red, I did, do green and oh, oh, I'm going to make this face here, whatever. And then the, usually, as you know, the painting takes over. So you are the master of the, of the, of the blank space. And then you start with something. And then there is a point where a purple dot doesn't fit or a purple re rectangle doesn't fit in that. It would be disharmonious, too disharmonious, too unbalanced to use purple in this, in this thing of whatever colors that are not fitting or in the composition or shapes. Could for that be a shape? A, you know, a circle wouldn't fit, a square wouldn't fit. And this interaction teaches you stuff. I mean, look at me. I have, I have no ed education, no zero. I mean, I'm a certified coach, but nothing I use from what I learned. I, 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 my, my learning comes all, my wisdom that I have or knowledge comes all from creating. 
because I'm, I'm an artist since six years old. And through that constant, I mean, I don't know, I, I never um, took count of my paintings, but uh, I just saw on, on, on Instagram, I had 1,200 paintings on there. So, but, but that is still nothing compared to Picasso because he had 35,000, right? <laughs> so, so I guess that that feel, that feeling of, you know, being always in the non-physical and the physical and always jumping back and forth keeps you in the moment because that's only possible in the moment. And I think you learn so much about humanity, uh, about uh, being, about your worth too, because I, I would suggest to every artist, even if you think this is the most horrible painting, never th or, or song or whatever, never throw it away. Put it somewhere and look at it in, in five months. And I've never heard somebody that comes back. He said that might, we might, and, and you can confirm that or not. But when somebody puts a, a painting away and then looks after a year at that painting, he might say one of two things. One, oh, I know what this painting needs. And then he, the painting is finished. Or he says, oh my God, this is actually a real good painting because you have a distance. Your ego is distanced from that. And I've never heard of, oh, I looked at it and I threw it away. I've never heard a single artist telling me, perhaps it's out there. I'm not saying there's no, I've never seen anybody going back to something that he hated or, what, or they just put back and said, I'm painting over it or something. And then pull that painting out and say, wow. That is good. Or, hey, I know exactly what it needs now. Now I know what it needs. So I don't know what, what your experience well, is on that. Well, it's, it's very true. Um, and it is uh, is advice I give to many of my art students as well, is even at the, at the very least, let your painting rest for a few days and then have a look at it. And I've just, just the other day, I pulled out a, a painting I, that I had done last year or maybe two years ago and I quite liked it even then but I'd realized how I'd moved on and I, I I'd painted the same subject just improved it just painted straight over what was already there which which was taking a bit of a risk because I knew I kind of liked the painting but I knew I could I could bring it out to its full potential. Um, but if I started and then messed that up, then there was a risk that I would make it worse. So you have that, you second guess yourself and you have that little uh, twinge of fear that maybe you should just leave it alone. But anyway, we got, we got stuck into it, finished the painting and I'm now much more happy with it. And I think in that little, that is a very tiny little experience, but it's a microcosm of what we do with our lives as well. Art is a microcosm of, of human life. It is an, of humanity. It's, it's, that's why I always say we are the stewards of bringing the human being forward, not the human doing, but bringing the human being. And we also live so much more conscious because we are always in the physical, non-physical in inspiration in, you know, <clears throat> mind, uh, you know, the, the mind hand control, you know, I don't know. There's a word, there's a word, there's a, a brain mind. Yeah. Coordination and all this stuff. So you, we constantly, because you have to be in the moment, you cannot say, okay, I want this hand to do something, but I'm thinking about a girlfriend that doesn't work. You have to focus in the moment to get, the inform enough information that you can actually uh, bring out whatever you intend to do onto the, the brush or onto do your voice or onto your whatever. You can't think. You, so, so music or, or art is always in the moment when you create it. And that's why it's so powerful. That's why it teaches you everything. All of a sudden, you know stuff that you never knew. And, and it works on its own time. So... If I feel totally distraught, out of balance, and I want to do to paint something or sing something or make a music or write something, I can't do it. I have to balance first. I have to get in the moment, do a breathing exercise or something to get in the moment. And then that's why I say when 
when you when you have a writer's block and by the way writer's block is also a system a system uh, symptom because i think before 1957 nobody wrote about writer's block you know that's and uh, goethe didn't say hey i was <laughs> that was a writer so um so the writer's block i always suggest that people g give themselves you know i'm gonna use one color that i choose in painting i use one color okay i think about this this pink orange this is a special and i'm gonna make that color mix it and i put it on the canvas and then i let it sit and if that's all and i'm all disturbed i'm not you know i'm not thinking, so when when i'm that's my focus but when i'm if i feel like it i will jump into it and it will go if it doesn't it doesn't and i think that is so helpful so like when you want to if extreme writers block with with writers especially so then i suggest you write one word and then extend on that word and then leave and then you need to give you the permission you need to be permission a human permission not a system permission to get in balance that's why we have seasons that's why we have uh, period cycles you need to you're out of balance and that's why you're distraught that's why you cannot create and you need to get first in balance everything first in balance so so that's the real power the power is not power over or power under or, or you know submit to something it is you need to submit to your balance that's if there's one submittal uh, is it is your balance so i wasn't listening to heavy metal and freaked out here before i talk here you know i took quiet and then said, okay and i wasn't thinking anything i was just being you know took a shower and said okay when you're talking about writer's block and uh, all this all the sort of block blockages that we throw in our way. I think uh, my biggest problem is probably just the, the basic case of procrastination. Is it? Is it? You know, the question is, is it? I I'm interrupting you on purpose here. Is 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 the procrastination or is it your way of balancing? Well, I don't know. I, well, I can all I can say is that when I start the day, I want to start in my studio doing something but i always find myself for the first three or four hours of the day doing something totally different it could be uh, vacuuming the carpets it could be sweeping up leaves outside anything to avoid getting to work but i usually find in the in by the time the afternoon comes around, then I'm ready to get back to work in my studio. So I'm starting to think that maybe it is simply um, some type of uh, biorhythm thing, which I have to get into a certain state, a certain mindset to be creative. I love that you said that. Yeah. I, I love that you say that because I think number one, laziness is a system word. It's like you're supposed to work at, in the morning from, from supposed is a killer word because there is no supposed because every human is different. I'm best in the morning. You're best in the afternoon. I was a night person. I changed to a morning person. So it's, it's up to what cycle we go through, what age we are, whatever. So not, you know, every time you hear suppose, don't listen to it. And then lazy too, or procrastination. Because procrastination is, it, 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 it's, it, I mean, this is the symptom. You, it looks like procrastination. But then you would say, I hate art. Because then you really need to get in touch. If that was true procrastination, you really don't, you rather, you prefer rather to sweep the carpets. And I, that I, I don't believe that because I know you're good enough that, that I say you hate painting or you hate art. That that is that it's it's you're not ready, you're not balanced, you're not you need to contemplate more, you need to be more by sweeping, cleaning. You know, uh, the CEO that works 60, 80 hours a week comes on the weekend, he works in the garden. He we are tinkerers. That's why lazy is such a lie. We need to tinker. 
even if we have a, a, a four day week or a three day work week, we always need to tinker. Uh, that's why you come home on the weekend and, and you work on your car. And, uh, uh, I mean, why do you work? Why don't you just sit in front of Netflix and watch that all, all weekend long, you know? And it, that happens too. And that's not wrong either, but just be aware of what you're doing. That's, that's what I say. I like what you're saying there. It's, it does ring true. And I think, yeah, I like that idea. I like the idea of not feeling guilty and beating yourself up because you're not at the desk or at the easel at 9 a.m. each day. Um, and that is a very self-destructive way of thinking. But you mentioned words. Um, what about words like uh, fear? Are, are these actions, are, are we perhaps fearful? Uh, maybe our art's not good enough or we fear that we're going to look foolish or uh, is fear a real problem or is it also a question of just getting some balance in your life? Uh, I think it's balance between past and being in the present, being in the moment. It's uh, you know, conditions, uh, I'm a master in fear because I think I was 40 years in my life. I had so much fear and anxiety. I was driving on a, on a freeway and, and, and all of a sudden would had a panic attack, not a panic attack. I just froze up in the middle of a six lane freeway in LA. And I, 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 I mean, and, and see, this is why podcasts are so important because people can relate that they always think system says, Oh, you're born and everything should be hunky-dory. If it isn't, we sell you a Ferrari. We sell you a, pi a pill. And we believe it. We are very adaptable. That's why systems can even work. And then we, we do this. So fear is basically when a sable-toothed tiger comes into your cave. Okay? You got to recognize it. You got to recognize it's an animal. It's a predatory animal. You, you, you need to recognize all these things. So... To say, for example, what political correctness says, equality and you see, shouldn't see a gender or a race or sexuality, you see it because your reptilian brain need, needs to identify if it's a foe or a friend. So you need to recognize it. That doesn't mean you need to have your uh, uh, stereotypes uh, mixed in and start thinking about what this person is going to do to you. Or when a bus jumps, I mean, those are the justified fears. Or when a bus ch uh, comes and almost hits you. That, that's why fear is done. It gets your adrenals. It gets you. And what does it do? It puts you in a moment. It puts you, it puts you in a moment. So fear is always when you think, when your mind takes over, your mind construct, which is a, is a system conditioning. Because systems say, oh, we, we do if you do this, this happens. So you're constantly in potential of what will happen and you will never reach it. it. I mean, this is what I said in the article. There is, I talked to so many success people and nobody knows. I have sold $11,000 paintings and I cannot tell you why I did it and how I did it. Somebody came, he said he liked the painting. I said a price and he took it. I didn't say, but that was one, two paintings, right? My paintings went for, you know, five, six thousand dollars usually, like two, five, it depends on the size. But which is also stupid because Mona Lisa is mini, and look at the price of that. You know, I mean this is a system we make values that we all adhere to that are completely irrelevant, you know? And we cannot define our that's why I say artists have to define start defining themselves how important their work is. And why it is working, and what are the, uh, you know, uh, you know what are, what is the function of it? So when I look at a painting, I'm buying uh, a physical representation of Markham's interaction with the non-physical. It's it's you know it it's I'm I'm buying a physical uh, from your conversation with your unconscious or God or a matrix or whatever. So how you see it, even if how you see it, I see stuff that I recognize behind you, but how I'm, I'm getting a deeper, that's why I say the more we know about the function, the more we appreciate art, because all of a sudden it makes human sense and not system sense. That, I mean, there's no, there's no human sense for saying why 
a painting should be four hundred million dollars. You know, it, there's no f human sense for it. You know, because you know that there is uh, a million paintings that that touch you deeply and then they don't touch you. Uh, and and it's okay when a painting doesn't touch you, but to put a price on it destroys it for everyone because because it, it should be whatever you're willing it should be an honoring i think the most honest way for artists should be that people honor you while you're alive saying hey i would like this but the market destroys it because the market says only you know mostly dead artists because it's and that's market also that's monopoly because it's a, a limited supply you know, it is that there's, we know there's only 150 pictures and you can have one of them. Do you think that artists and creative people in general have a duty to create and share their work? There is something about that I've, I've read about artists, obviously, in the, oh, let's say, thousands of years ago in the tribal sense or etc. The artist was a functioning important part of the community and had certain functions magical or religious or whatever it was and of course um, that's gone through many, many adaptions but now in the modern time i think we've been belittled uh, a lot you know things like sometimes i hear people saying oh, the world doesn't need more people studying arts, well, Bachelor of Arts at university. They should be at a college learning how to be electricians and plumbers and engineers. That's all the world needs is more engineers. And the last thing we need is some artsy fartsy person. Mm. Yeah, those are system disturbed people. Those are system uh, uh, disturbed people because uh, like you said, the cave paintings, uh, why does it Okay, so the, the let's say going to tribe, let's go right back, you know, like where you what you I love that because that's we can find perhaps what is important about art. It is there was this kid or this person or this woman or whatever in the tribe that actually could have a hand eye coordination. That's what it's called hand eye coordination. And he could draw a mammoth, a fish, something on the wall. And he did that on the wall because he could do it the best he could do, like stretching a canvas. He could do the drawing. And why is it important? Because stories like podcasts uh, make people relate to each other and make. And, and I think perhaps subconsciously, these people were aware of, let's say they made a spear and they, you see them spearing a, a mammoth and they draw that, that cave painting. And perhaps it's it's an, a stimulator to, to to conversation, which we see in museums today. There's I th I, I don't think the, if we talked about it, but uh, I say there's the magic that happens. You want to see the ma magic of art. Every race, every color, every uh, political party, every religion can be at an art opening. And the the last thing they do is looking at art, but they're communing. They're communing together. And I think art has a very strong thing communing. So when you see a cave painting, look what we do with them. We've uh, discovered new uh, new cave paintings. We What did they say? What? Because it is, and that's, I think, arts, art is the best history, uh, the most objective history uh, documentation. And I think that's what we are. I think we are... Uh, here, we, we are not conscious of it, but this is what we're doing right now. Uh, we make ourselves conscious. If we are here to uh, tell humans, our future generations, how we saw a harbor, what I see back there, like, or how we saw, saw this. And so they can, they know, the next generation knows, and over many generations is, oh, this is how they perceived certain things because you know that the most distinctive sense is the, the eyesight because that's the most discerning so i'm talking this especially of this art but but singing and noises and sounds 
you know, uh, I just think about the, the, the ringtones, you know, there's the old ringtones from the old phone. Then you have the, 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 you know, this, 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 this marimba uh, that everybody knows it's in every movie. So we are in our being doing the best that we can do, stretching a canvas, painting on the wall, do whatever, uh, singing a song. We are documenting human condition. And I think it's an excellent question, by the way. I, I never thought about it, but I, I, that happens when people talk. There's a, there's a quote by Maya Angelou, and I only remember part of it, but she said something like, um, people will forget everything about you except how you made them feel. It doesn't matter if how good your art is or whether you're a beginner or a master, because let's take a situation where a, a child draws a painting for a parent, you know, and, and if that parent is well adjusted, they will probably think that's the greatest piece of art and you put it up on your wall. And I still have children's, my children's art framed on, on the wall. And of course, to anyone else, it's not worth anything financially. Then you've got a master artist who will do a beautiful painting, let's say Monet, um, and I love the painting or Van Gogh or whatever. And you look at it and you think that's an absolutely fantastic painting and, and you love it. But out of both pieces of art, your child's art and that Monet painting, you love them both, even though the one is simply a child's amateur drawing because it's how they make you feel. Artists can just keep that in mind. It doesn't matter if they are not in a museum. Um, what their duty is to create art and communicate that to people, communicate their feelings through their art and help people feel something. After most of our days are filled with, as you say, system influences, and by the end of the day, you're completely numb. But a little piece of art, music, writing, or a picture can make someone's day. You know, that's that's what it comes to. Uh, I, I, it brings you right into balance. It, it brings you into balance. And, and I think uh, you said, you know, should everybody, I think art asks nothing more than to being created. Art doesn't mean you have to be famous. That's all system. That's all when the product is done. But art itself, the energy of creativity, wants to be created. It comes through an inspiration. It comes through a thought. It comes through something. And it makes, it creates an emotion in you and you create it. And therein is obviously the most power because in creation, look at what the world is created. But it was... See, this is where the discrepancy is. So art does what, want nothing else but be created. So it will create anything, dark things, killing people to happy people. It, it, the creativity wants to be created. And wherever you go, uh, bring it, I mean, the atomic bomb is good is, uh, for energy or is bad for environment or is bad for both. You know, it's, it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's just what you do with what comes in. So I feel it needs to be created. That's number one and two is two points in art. To, it wants to be created and it wants to be exposed. And if it's only exposed to one person, because I think with the feedback, the art settles in. So it's not just your interaction with the non-physical. It's then, then sharing that physical that you brought in, that gift with somebody else. Not millions of people. It doesn't have to be. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but if you have the chance, of course, with so many people as you want to share, you share. And this experience of doing that creates tremendous self-esteem in you. It tremendous, I'm worthy. I am, there's a reason why I exist. When you, system didn't give you birth. System didn't create the nature. So we have to be uh, grounded in we are the highest being on this planet because this that even apple is not has not given birth to a single child or or nike or a state 
Russia has not given child to thing, but they're taking lives. Russia and Ukraine both taking lives. I'm not going into politics, but I'm just saying we need to see that and we need to grab back and say it's about human first and systems have to, like a tribe, has to serve us. Why, why did we start doing a tribe? To be safe, to be secure, and to be able to, to grow our human potential so that the, the, the mother doesn't sit just with the child and does nothing else but that function of being a child, but the mother can go and, and pluck, pluck peri berries or, or do whatever, or weave or create art. You know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't done that, that uh, uh, but if the mother is alone in a cave and the husband is hunting or whatever, you know, stereotypes here, right here again, but um, then, then it, it, it doesn't make sense. It, it just, it's, it's better to do it together. And the power, the exponential power is when, uh, when you are together with somebody else, with at least one person and have a discourse, uh, an exchange. Uh, and not right, wrong, because right, wrong, supposed to, those are all system words. They're a system condition world that separate us and make us think we have to carry all the burden. We don't. We don't. It, it's like me saying uh, before this talk, I say, I need to figure everything out when I'm talking to, to Marco. No, I start, because I'm an artist, I start trusting that I will have the right conversation in this interaction and the stuff will come, but whatever needs to come, comes. Because we are used to, right? Constantly in that. And that's, 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 and they say, how can you not be prepared when you talk about the topics? I said, because it comes in, what comes in. <laughs> when you talk about the, the system, I think when we were younger, we, there was in the last century, all talk about the system meant the, you finish school, you go to university, you get a job, you work your way up the corporate ladder, you buy lots of nice things for your house, and you retire at 65 and you die when you're 70. And that was the ideal that we were told and along the way. Yes, life. ideal life. <laughs> yeah. Take out lots of insurance <laughs> and... Make sure your children carry on with the same thing. And then we've seen that in our in the school system. Well, you had troubles with your school because you didn't fit in. But the schools were also geared to churning out middle managers. And it's only the outliers that really broke out of the school system. Um, so maybe you're an outlier. But the point is, uh, now we've got... People my age, your age, whatever, we, we've got children that are entering the world, let's say. We know the old system. So how do we explain this, or should we even bother trying, to the new millennial growing up in the, the century? I would, I would start with the first lie. I would tell him, all my kids or any young kids, which I tell him, I think, what you... The fundamental lie that makes everything uh, uh, distraught, that makes humanity, is that life should be perfect. You should never be depressed. You should be never sad. You should not. not it should never rain. Basically, what 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 society, what system says, it should never rain. And if it does rain, we sell you an umbrella, we sell you a pill, we sell you whatever. I think that's. I said, you, we are in a two-dimensional world, you know, in, in an opposite yin and yang, and you've got to, an airplane doesn't fly from here to New York on a straight line. It constantly adjusts. And these ambiguities that you encounter are uh, guideposts to say, okay, I'm going there or I'm not going there. And to gauge your own, the, your own abilities to say, okay, I want to be a baker. Okay, you go baker, but you don't want to get up in the morning. And the job doesn't give you enough passion that you says, I don't care. Because you know, like I do, when you have an inspiration, you get up at five o'clock and you you go to the canvas, you go sing the song. You do that's why I say we that's a so such an organic way of being, being an artist. And this organic, we can't lose that organic. 
uh, place by saying, okay, now you have to go get a master's in fine art and have to learn basically art history because they're not talking like what we're talking right now. That's, that's artist talk. Artist talk so artist. That's what, and, and there's no more mentoring. You know that, that mentoring is almost gone. And this is, we have such an organic, humane power in us uh, as artists. And I think we are chosen. It's not a choice. It's just we are chosen or we chose to carry that on, be the stewards for humanity. And I think that's number one. The, 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 and then I think we need to teach uh, superpowers. We, we have three superpowers. Number one is creativity. Look at everything we created in this world, good and bad. Uh, and when you look at something, you look at Apple, Nike uh, brand, look at it, be, be astonished by it and say, okay, that's human. Don't look at it. It's better. It's separated from me. It's a part of humanity and you are part of it. So you are somehow a part of Apple, but you also somehow a part of the Ukraine-Russian war. That comes secondary. But I would teach my kid that. I would say, first of all, it's not everything thing. And look at the range so that you see from killing people to Apple, iPhone, the new one or iPad and all that, what, what that culture offers you. We created it out of nothing remember there was there was a stone age look at this i mean every iphone has more uh, power now than uh, than apollo you know they, 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 they i mean every iphone has that iphone you get uh, so so make them aware of the power of the, what's in them the limitlessness of their creativity and then say be aware of the three superpowers at least that i have identified is number one creativity number two because it, the power is in the inclusion, dialogue, healthy dialogue, because there's stuff coming in. And I see you taking notes too. There's stuff coming in that you were aware of. We are aware of everything, but basically, yeah, I want to, I want to make a point of this. I want to co come back to it. And then, and then uh, the threes are adaptability. Please never forget that third superpower. We make through our adaptability, the systems work because systems are always limited. They have one function, two functions. And, and, and so we, by our will and adaptability, we can make it. So I think that, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, Arizona ex-governor that passed away. He was in a tiger cage, uh, you know, in a tiger cage for four years. If you cannot adapt, you cannot survive. I mean, there's there's no logic that says you can adapt, but that's a superpower, adaptability. And how much do you make work because you adapt to it versus you stay in your... And, and so what came the... Uh, we have adaptability. So when a sable tooth tiger comes that we know what to do. So when you come and you start arguing at me, uh, uh, you start attacking me, I know I have the wisdom in me to to, you know, go on the side and don't take the error or whatever. I have to I have the, the wisdom to, to handle this with my adaptability. But adaptability became, you have to adapt to the system. That's where your value is. And that's not where your value is. You're, you still can work in the system and be powerful. But that's what I tell kids. That's, we've got, it's a long answer, but. Yeah, I think uh, there, there, there may be a lot of hope for us because a lot of young adults are starting to reject the system themselves. An example comes to mind of my son telling me he's, he's not going to do computer science. He doesn't want to go to university. He wants to be a writer. <laughs> if I hadn't been an artist, I think I probably would have had a heart attack at that and thought you would never amount to anything. But how could I get on his case because, you know, I, I have to just say, well, there you go. Another thing uh, comes to mind, though, is trying to force things to happen. Um, artists trying to, trying to force changes, um, trying to force themselves onto to others to get attention, more influence. And I always find any... Any attempts to force something 
doesn't work. And your life, life said that, right? Your life, you, you confirmed that with your life. And I do, I do too. I absolutely agree with you. Forcing is, 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 I think, you know, the attention was important. What you said, you said something, it just comes, it, it's the attention that you get, but the most attention you get when you're you, the more you, I think we are all mummies. We come, come to earth. We learn how to be physical and, and we get bandaged. Because it says, you know, physical means this by parents till eight years and you, you get bandaged and you get more and more a mummy and then you get in school and you're more mummy. And then at the end of the school, you are mummified, you cannot move. And then comes life and then you take the bandages off and find more and more of who you are. And that's would be the organic process of our existence with systems, you know, that you take off the, not that you go somewhere towards you are everything that you already are, but you haven't unveiled it and experience like the podcast or whatever, help you unveil more who the dialogue, which is dialogue helps you unveil who you are to get interact with other races, other sexes. So to re because our gender and, and races and sex was never supposed to be even a, an issue. Everybody does whatever they can, the best that they can. If a woman is the best canvas stretcher, she does it. It 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 and it, it it should never be a thing. But system is so limited, so they put us in this separation of of of, of and now we have to refine to get back because the power is in the inclusion. It's not in the exclusion. It's in the it's together. It's not better, worse. Disempowering seems to be the the biggest feature in the world at the moment, um, keeping people divided, as you say, raising things like race and and sex and and religion and all of those things. Why why even bother? I mean, if you were all, if you had four people on a deserted island, you'd all learn to work together. You wouldn't worry about petty things like that. But that's how we kept. Um, disempowered. That's why we kept off balance and fearful. I, I get the impression that the world in general is waking up to this, and there's a lot of people starting to realize they're just being manipulated by systems, by governments. Um, that's the last place we need to look for anything positive. At the heart of being a creative person, what I find is that we are incredibly self-reliant, naturally independent, but we can cooperate and contribute. But right now, everything seems to be forcing us to stand with a cap in hand and wait for a handout. And then if we don't get it, we've got to, then we've got to blame someone else for it because it's not our fault. I think that's the last thought I wanted to just mention, um, perhaps you can comment as well, is uh, taking responsibility. You've got to take responsibility to find your power. Otherwise, you'll never discover what you can do. Yeah, uh, so I, I think responsibility is also, first of all, I think the most responsible artist, as much as that sounds crazy, because what does an artist do? He has an inspiration and he finishes the product. We finish the product. We have an idea. We're not doing it haphazardly. We don't put it together that it doesn't work. We create, we have an inspiration, we create it and we finish it. I feel a lot of people are jealous at artists because they can create and they feel from system conditioning, they can only do on a conveyor belt three company or they can only talk to, I mean, you see it in customer service. They have to give you in 15 tiers. One person is so conditioned to be limited that they, that, that they can only talk about a return. They cannot talk about the quality of the product or, or anything while you're returning. You have to give it to another tier. So they ask you, what do you need? An email uh, service? You need this service? You need this service? And it can be very limited because it's all controlled. And that's why I'm saying I'm not against systems. 
the system, I'm, I'm saying we need to reassess our power and our interaction with systems. We need to re renew, we are limitless. We, we can make systems that system, we can make a capitalism that is ethnic, that is not 24 seven open and continuously works against the biorhythms and life forces that people need to actually work and 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 to 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 if i want to get the most out of you i wanted you to be balanced i'm i mean i'm a leader I, i'm running teams and stuff i look how can i balance this this guy needs a little bit more break this less and he's blooming when he has less break but i know also that he's going over the over the target so you it's about all balance it, it's all about uh uh keeping everybody in balance and i don't see i think entitlement is a symptom of that it's it's a symptom the entitlement is because you're so neutered by the system they say how can i do i have to demand and it's just a system a, a symptom we need to recognize these entitlements not be upset see because we, I get the same, I'm, I have the same emotional thing. I said, they, they think they get everything for free. But we, if we see it like this, then it's human against human, which is anyway against in the system because system maintenance, system uh, navigation. Uh, that new taxes come out and new, we find out new ways to navigate those taxes, not to pay them. It's human against human. And what we need to do is dialogue. That's why I think it, it's it's unconscious. I think it, the, the the drive to so many podcasts, even though it's not the same. If I would sit right now with you, you know, we would give him more out of it. But 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 other people can hook into this tribal campfire talk, and I think uh, and and I I'm so glad you're doing this because art is art is the essential. If we want to have humanity flourish for the next generations and for your kids, kids and for, uh, and give it any value. See, we have lost the value because we create, it's like an artist creates a doll. Yeah. And then he makes it beautiful. She's lifelike. And then all of a sudden he starts talking to the doll. Oh, everything is fine. But all of a sudden he says, can you give me a tax tip? How I can pay my uh, less taxes. And then he I mean, it becomes a mind construct. Uh, you are so amazed by that you are creative, that you could create this doll, that you submit it. You know, uh, you, you say, okay, this soul, uh, this this thing is more than me. This is like when you create apple. I mean, you think uh, that's it, not, not the whole apple is more worse than a human being. Because humans created that. If apple would have created human beings, the app, then, then, then apple has every right to talk about taking lives or or whatever, or mistreat human beings or whatever. I'm not saying Apple does, but I'm saying uh, the perception, we need to we need to go around the fountain when the sun shines and and, and see, aha, uh -huh, there's a rainbow. And we, we that's what we te teach our kids. I say, oh, sun is shining, all right, for rainbow. Okay, let's go around the fountain, then you see the rainbow. You never forget that. It's an experiential uh, experience, a, a, a learning. And, and you know it for the next generations, and you you know nobody ever people will find rainbows. That's that's, I think a good a good word to end. <laughs> that that is a good one. Well, Michael, um, it's been good chatting to you again. I hope to have a little chat to you again in a few more months, and we'll see if the world has uh, yeah made some improvements. I'm not too confident about that, but hopefully. People listening to this make some personal commitments to their art and creativity, and then that will have a positive effect. So you're going to send me your uh, article, and I'm going to provide that as well as a download for people listening to this. Now, anybody just, you know, michaelm.com, Michael with two L's. That's my hub, and you get everywhere, and you can contact me or whatever. Uh, uh, and I, 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 I encourage everybody, human or as a just human or artist, to listen to the Smart of Art podcast. It's 20 seconds, doesn't take any time, doesn't take time away from Malcolm's and my uh, uh, <laughs> episode. 
And uh, that has to be aware. Uh, it will make much more sense and to find the hu human power and the inclusion and to find this, this, this incredible power of creativity that we kind of have, have lost a sight of. And we have, with that, we have lost a sight of our humanity. And that's, that's, and I thank you so much for giving me that, that platform and co-creating with me a beautiful talk. I've learned a lot. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Michael. Thanks very much. And uh, we'll chat again soon. I want to thank Michael McGrooch for being my special guest on today's episode of Loosen Up Your Painting podcast. Find out more about Michael on his website at michaelm.com. It's Michael with two L's. Also, take a moment to visit my website, malcolmdeweyfineart.com, where you can find this interview with a transcript and also have a look at some of the painting courses that are on offer. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast, wherever you may be listening to it, and we'll have a new episode for you soon. Finally, find out more on my YouTube channel as well. You could be watching this interview right there as well. And have a look at the other works on that's YouTube slash Malcolm Dewey and there's plenty there for you as artists. Thank you very much for joining me and we'll talk again soon. Cheers for now. Mm -hmm.